<laughs> we're back. back. Welcome back oh. to another episode of History with Henry. This time we're going to do some modern history. The date is July 21, 1969. Ooh, jeez, I like that. I feel like we're going to go somewhere extra special today. July 21st, 1969. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ooh. That was an interesting time. It was an interesting time. It feels time. like a JFK kind of time. Am I right? Yes. I can't remember when JFK is assassinated. Anyway, what we're talking about is Neil Armstrong being the first man to walk on the moon. They put a man on the moon. Giant stepped up, what you think? Walking on the moon. So was he the first guy out and on? He was the um, first dude to walk on the moon and he's accompanied by three other dudes. One of them is... Uh, Buzz Aldrin The other guy Is some other guy <laughs> Some other guy some Was other guy. Neil the guy That said That's one small step For man One giant leap For mankind Yeah I'm pretty <laughs> sure I'm pretty sure That's his off. quote And then uh, Australia A little known fun fact Is uh, responsible For the televising Of it to the world Ooh That's uh, That's pretty cool Yeah yeah it's a, it's a big thing Sam Neil features In the film Affectionately known as The Dish The Dish well, Ever seen it Ever heard of it No haven't heard of it. Good name. Seen it. Um, is it? Anyway, the real <laughs> big victory of this is it's the uh, West's victory, specifically America's victory over the uh, Russian space America! Program. America! Well, the question is, and everyone's always wondered, mm. and it's a bit of a funny kind of conspiracy, but mm. it's wide known that um, people think that it was staged. Which is a sick joke. Well, yeah, but also, like, he he cuts out just after he delivers the... You know, the everlasting quote yeah. for mankind. Yeah, but it's also like 1969. I mean, like, you know, people, is, the cell phone isn't even a thing. And Hang people on. people are like, oh, but, it's fake. Like, come but on. But didn't green screens exist back then? Show me a movie from the 70s that has that quality special effect. That level of granularity. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, even the fact that they were able to transmit the signal back to Earth is pretty, is pretty amazing. What was more of an achievement? Was it getting to and walking on the moon mm. or was it the ability to broadcast it to the world? Um, definitely, because I feel like you can't have one without the other. You definitely can't have one without the other, but it's definitely getting to the moon and walking on it because that was like the big, the, the end of the space race because uh, the Soviets had... Uh, put the first man in space. So America was kind of like freaking out about that because they were a bit behind on all of that. But uh, luckily enough, America had all the former Nazi scientists that uh, invented the original ballistic missile to help <laughs> out. So no worries there. <laughs> so how much do we know about Neil? Neil? Mr. Armstrong, you know, hugely popular. Yeah, he's a, bit, he's a pretty big deal. He still is a pretty big deal. I heard an interesting quote from somebody. It was somebody who, you know, um, imposter syndrome, everybody gets it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, I want to say maybe it was Neil Gaiman. Anyway, um, whoever this person was was at an event and they were in a room with all these, you know, famous scholars, famous scientists and all this kind of stuff. And then uh, they went to go get a drink from the bar and an uh, old fella turned around to him and was like, oh, I always feel, you know, what have I done to be in here? And that dude was Neil Armstrong. So, I mean, if the dude who walked well, on the moon first out of any human gets imposter syndrome, it can happen to happen to any of us. But, um, yeah, the real victory of this is the... Is the the propaganda victory, you know, like this is a big deal. It shows the ingenuity of America. I meant American well, exceptional. Just just think about back in that time when was it black and white still or was it color? I think color existed, but I don't think it was like. Yeah. Um, but even so, it feels yet. like in 1969, mm. it would have been such fanfare and such build up. Everyone yeah. would have been glued to the screen, no doubt. Yeah, and then well, some people were. I know my mum was. Um, Alive to watch it And they got like a TV set In the school To like watch it And none of the kids cared But I mean Classic Classic youth Am I right? I wonder if a lot of people Bought TVs Off the back of being able To watch it Surely I mean like It's you know Momentous It's awesome Like people getting into space Like that's beast When I think of that I think of the MTV logo And the (laughs) You know The guy (laughs) On the moon With the MTV flag Yeah well uh, Also it's when uh, David Bowie Came to prominence With his uh, Space OED song, mm. uh, which he wrote. I don't, it's actually about heroin addiction, but um, yeah, mm. everyone was like, "Oh, it's about it's about the moon landing." That's exciting. Yeah. Um, so now that we now that we've done that, nineteen sixty nine, that's yeah. done. Yeah. So it's like okay, we now 
planning to just go back regularly or like what's the next what was the next biggest thing because that's pretty big well we did a few more uh lunar missions i think about under 10 but over five well Um, i've seen that movie apollo 13 with tom hanks Mm -hmm. is that is that these guys or is that different guys i think was that about neil armstrong uh, the apollo mission is the the one that got them to the moon the first time is just the first one. I think it's just oh. called like the Apollo mission. And then they did like multiple other ones. Um, but now they're currently constructing a space station to orbit the moon to begin construction on a lunar colony. Mm. Well, research based it at this point in time. But that will, of course, grow as all colonies do into, mm. uh, into you know, people living on the moon. It'll be game on. Yeah. Um, I feel like those guys um had that huge moment in their careers of being the guys that went to the moon Mm -hmm. and and that's nothing short of like amazing yeah because obviously the selection process and the trust and the ability to yeah to get there um but they would have had such an amazing career post doing that i think i've seen one of them (laughs) in i think it's buzz aldrin that endorses like the chuck norris total gym and uh, Mm. oh no he was like he had like an elliptical machine and the whole thing was you know i'm old and if you're old too Mm. you can work out like me and it's just like walking on the moon (laughs) i'm working out on the moon well that's the hard part about space you've got to work out constantly because um the human body of course being one of the most adaptable organisms on the planet as soon as you enter a zero G environment or a low gravity environment, it's like, all right, cool. We don't need bone density anymore. I'm going to toss that out. Uh, mm. I'm just going to pump it all in a muscle. So, so, yeah. so does that mean you have to like what kind of working out would you have to do before you go on the moon to keep bone density? Because everyone knows that if you need to go somewhere where you need muscle, mm. it's like okay, you 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 lift weights. Yeah, but how the hell are you just drinking two liters of milk? Daily. There's, um, <laughs> there is a school of uh, physical exercise. I believe it's all like osteopathy and like osteostrong ah, and that okay. kind of stuff. But that's all like bone focused. And you don't have to do it like for the guys who were going to the moon. That's, you know, I would. I think they're only there for like maybe a few hours, like a couple of days at max. And that was so, it. And then they come back. But yeah. um, So you're probably all good there. But for the guys on the uh, International Space Station, which is now being deconstructed because we're going to build a new one, um, they have to do it all the time. And then you wow. get their fun videos that they always send if you've seen them like yes. trying to eat uh, food. How long are they at the space station for? They stay for a year. A year? Yeah, which is like crazy because like I guess it would be fun, but there would be parts of it that would be like really, really scary as well. It's like yeah. when you have to go out in the suit and like do repairs and stuff. Yeah. Like that's kind of like the stuff of nightmares. If you were to like fall in the wrong direction, it's like, well, see ya, that's it. Like, you know. Really? Yeah, well, there's no um, I've seen that movie with Sandra Bullock and George Gravity. Clooney. Gravity. Yeah. Is it literally like that? If you just get get stuck turning the wrong way, yeah, it's game over. Yeah, well, because there's well, no, they've got the, um, they've got the jets in their pack. yeah. They release like a little bit of um air and stuff because there's nothing to stop your momentum in space. So you just like keep going. <laughs> wow, yeah, which is horrifying. And isn't it's also, it crazy? It's also like minus. Um, I think it's absolute zero, and then at the same time, if you look at the sun without a visor on, it'll like burn your entire face off. Because the atmosphere really? like defends us from all that kind of stuff, yeah. Wow. So it's like a horrifically dangerous environment. Like there's no environment on Earth that compares to it. I like that. Yeah, it's well, that, crazy. That's been another episode of history with Henry, uh, and space we've got the space and back. I love that. Yeah. Ooh. I feel like I need to cue some David Bowie space odyssey. <laughs> Tell the people where they can go if they want to get their own oh, podcast. Oh, yeah. Goes without saying, this this show is sponsored by Torched Productions. Mm-hmm. Torched with a T. Oh, yeah. If you want a podcast, you want a show, you want content, yep. go to gettorched.com. That's G-E-T-T-O-R-C-H-T mm-hmm. dot com. Socials. Socials. We are the Catch Podcast Social on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want to hit us up on Twitter, we're Catch with a capital C underscore podcast with a capital P underscore. Love it. See you guys next week.